John, at the, his teammate, uh, the young James Wiseman, and basically what Draymond said was, uh, come on, man, come on, man, F that, F that, referring to that pass that got swiped by Nerland's Noel. And as they go back, you see Draymond yelling at Wiseman, and Butler tees him up right there. So what's your interpretation of how this went down? Uh, I think, you know, it was just, it was the wrong, wrong call in my opinion. You know, this happens, you know, throughout the course of the season when you're trying to throw the ball in the post and, you know, your guy might not seal him or, you know, it might be a bad pass. So I think it was just the wrong, wrong play, the wrong time. And I think the referee thought he was talking to him. And it looked like Draymond was upset with James Wiseman for not holding off Nerlens Noel. A similar play happened in, in, with the Lakers, where Draymond tried to throw the ball to James Wiseman. He didn't catch it. To me, I was always taught it's always the passes. You know, he's in control of what happens. And if, if the ball's turned over, it's the passer. But yeah, they, he could have held off and been a little more physical. Um, but again, the leadership, how you speak to your teammates, is as important how you speak to the referees. There's got to be some control there. Yeah. And you're still trying to teach this incredibly gifted young player who's going to be a superstar, teach him the NBA game. How that happens on a daily basis is important. Marquise Chris immediately chimed in. You know, he's hurt, broken leg, bad ankle, watching at home. And he said he, he wasn't yelling at Sean Butler, the official. He was yelling at his teammate. But the question is... You know, and he is going to take James Wiseman under his wing and he's going to teach him defensive rotations, how to play in this league. But there's a lot of tact. Uh, you know, some guys would be spicy with their teammates, maybe Kobe Bryant, maybe Michael Jordan behind closed doors. But you got a 19 year old, very impressionable young man trying to do the right thing and to call him out like that. And again, that's not why he got run. He should not have been run. Right. But should he be speaking to his teammates like that in a open gym with microphones around officials and not do it in the closed practice setting uh, you know it's the heat of a moment but it, once again this is a rookie he's a 19 year old rookie that played what three games before hit the first 15 games so he's learning and a lot of things is going to be you know you have to take patience you know it takes patience to talk to young players I was a 19 year old rookie I wasn't playing as many minutes important minutes as James Wiseman but it is ways that you can you know relate things to your teammates and let them know hey you you need to do this you need to do that so it, it, it's different ways to to you know express your feelings to your teammates I you know at halftime Darrell and I spoke to Tim Hardaway senior he was similar to that. He was very outspoken, yeah. uh, very competitive, very fiery. Um, but there is, a, a, there's, there is a tact, as you said, to how you approach guys. James Wiseman seems like he's a sponge. He wants all the information, and how that's relayed is important. And everyone has their own style, right? Everyone, you got to be true to your personality. Steph is very laid back. Draymond's a fiery, competitive guy. Uh, and that may be their relationship. I don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Yeah. Uh, how do you think this is handled among the coaching staff? Did, does Steve say something to Draymond? Yes, we got it wrong. Maybe we should have a mechanism to challenge this and look at this and go back and listen to the audio. Hey, John Butler, he's not yelling at you. Right. He's yelling at his teammate. But why is he yelling at his teammate I, I think like that? Sure. Is that something Steve should bring up to Draymond? I'm, I'm with Darrell. I think it was totally the wrong call by the referee. Draymond Green should not have been ejected. Um, yeah, so I think that should be a challengeable call. And I think they could easily go, they go to, they have the audio, as you said, they go to the screen, they go to Secaucus. It was just, because uh, we had a, we had another play where Bullock missed that layup and it was an invert whistle. That's really right. what it was. It was an yeah. invert whistle yeah. and they could have changed it. Yeah. All right, so James Wiseman played on after Draymond got ejected. And we thought, you know, arguably, his best game as a young pro last night against LaMarcus Aldridge. We knew it would be difficult, way more difficult tonight against Mitchell Robinson, Darrell. But he played well tonight. He went 24 47. He had 15 points. He had eight rebounds, five of nine from the floor, made five of seven from the free throw line. And he was active, and he got a lot of run after Draymond was, was run late in the game. Yeah, I thought it was a good game for him, you know, especially seeing two young, good shot blockers, uh, Norlis Noel, who's known for his defense and also Mitch Robertson he's known for his defense so I thought he did a pretty good job with you know holding his own against these guys and going you know attacking their bodies like we talked about in pregame and trying to finish over top of them so I think he had a pretty solid game tonight another learning experience after playing against Anthony Davis Marcus Sol, LaMarcus Aldridge these two young fellows as, as Darrell said Nerlens Noel and uh, Mitchell Robinson similar to uh, 
Wiseman in yeah. stature, a very yeah. similar uh, style of play. I thought he did a good job. Every night I watch him, I see a lot of positive. I, I, don't, I don't really see the negatives with him. So you lose Draymond Green, and obviously your defense eroded. It wasn't good in the first quarter. It was better in the second quarter. Then in the second half, it fell apart because you don't have Draymond. But he also does so much offensively, sets the high drag, the screen for Steph. They run the offense through him. So Steph's role in the second half changed, and they had to bring Nico Mannion in right away to get in their ball tender to get Steph off the ball in the second half. Well, minus Draymond. I really thought off the games. Formal welcome inside the studio. Greg Papa back with you on Warriors Pregame Live, presented by Comcast Business, the Hall of Famer Chris Mullen. Darrell Wright, you said after the game last night, the most complete game the Warriors have played on both ends of the floor, wire to wire, took apart the San Antonio Spurs. They definitely did, and I think the thing was they started off. They got off to a great start. We've seen the Warriors, you know, kind of spar with teams and, you know, try to get a feel for the other team. But I felt like they were about their business, that carryover from that Laker game. It really, really helped them. So I would definitely mark this down as their most complete game this season so thus far. Pop, very aggressive and decisive, attacking the paint off the dribble, getting blow bys. And that, that uh, James Wiseman was a recipient of many lobs, as you see Draymond hitting him here. So great court awareness by James Wiseman playing out a dunker spot and tremendous uh, playmaking by his teammates. Everybody was getting blow bys, getting into the paint and making the proper decisions, whether it be score or drop off for easy of baskets. His, of his eight baskets last night, seven were dunks, and he was in that dunker spot all night. you got to wonder if Tom Thibodeau will allow him to have that kind of freedom <laughs> tonight. It is time for our Comcast Business. Every uh, connection is brought to you by Comcast Business. Every connection counts. We turn to our Warrior Insider, uh, Monty Poole, who joins us on Warriors pregame live. So Andrew Wiggins had a solid game uh, again last night, Monty, with 18 points and a good rebounding total of plus 27. Uh, you wrote about him after in your, your story about it. And what is Steph calling him now? Two-way Wiggs is the new nickname for Andrew Wiggins. <laughs> who would have thunk it, you know? Um, Andrew Wiggins came to the Warriors with a reputation of being a guy who didn't know how to play defense, didn't want to play defense, didn't care about defense. And also, by the way, he was an inefficient shooter. Um, but those things are changing. Uh, the Warriors have said that we believe that we can get Andrew to play defense. He is playing defense at a high level, higher level than some of the known defensive players in the NBA are. And so you look at the way he contests shots, you look at the way that he's able to blow by guys on offense. So I think right now he's a two-way guy. He's not an all-star right now, but he is a guy who's giving him 18 a night. He's making plays off the ball, and he is defending every single night. So he is not the guy that people said, ah, you know, he's going to give you empty calories, you know, 30-point nights and you don't do anything. Or he's going to be the guy who's able to look good but not do anything. He's going to be a guy who will, or more often than not, will be, the, be one person who is able to score eight points one night, 40 points the next night, and then go back to eight. This year, he's been solid with that. Double figures every single game, at least 15 points most nights, some nights over 20. Last night, he had a really good night. His efficiency has increased, and his consistency is what's been really impressive, as Monty, Monty said. Uh, and Andrew Wiggins is a byproduct of playing with better players, playing with the Steph Curry that draws so much attention. You see some of those clips. He's shooting wide open three-point shots. He looks comfortable and confident. And when they close out on him, he's got tremendous speed to run where he's getting into the paint to either finish or kick out. And I think he's an underrated playmaker. He's definitely an underrated playmaker. And I love when Coach Kerr put him on a bench a little bit earlier, put him in with the second unit, and he's more of a playmaker going downhill and pick and roll. So I think he's been doing a great job. And I think those guys, he know, you know, the aura that the Warriors take on the court and the pride on defense and Draymond holding those guys accountable. And we're seeing something that we didn't know Andrew Wiggins can do, and that's guard at a high level and, you know, go out there and on the other end and, and get it done. So I'm, I'm happy to see him doing well, and I think, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a good year for him. He may draw R.J. Barrett tonight as the next third leading scorer at over 17 points a game. Their leading scorer, Monty, is Julius Randle, and I know that's the matchup you're looking for tonight to keep an eye on. And I go back to when Julius Randle was a, a young L.A. Laker they compared his passing ability to Draymond Green. He averages over six assists a game, 22 points and 11 rebounds. But you, you mentioned this in a story today. What did Julius Randle tell Draymond Green when he was young and foolish playing with the Lakers, Monte? <laughs> yeah, it was a Lakers-Warriors game, preseason game back in 2016 and uh, 2015, actually. And Draymond was guarding Julius, you know, second-year player. He was full of himself. And 
he decided at one point to say Draymond can't guard me. He can't guard me. <laughs> now, that was on a play after Julius had driven to the lane and got into the bucket, but Draymond fouled him, and that's when he said that. Now, Draymond kind of laughed and smirked, but you know what? Over the past few years, these guys have developed a really good relationship. There's mutual respect there. Draymond thinks that Julius Randle could be better than he is because look at Julius' size, 6'9", 250. He's a better athlete, so... It's fun to watch that. I expect Draymond Green to really rise to the challenge tonight because he knows Julius Randle is on load right now. So if Monty Poole remembers that, you think Draymond Green remembers oh. that? <laughs> you know he does. But, and on the other, Ju Julius Randle is off to an all-star start. Yes. 23 points.